the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Dear brothers and sisters, I greet all of you on this feast, this joyous feast of the Dormition of the All-Blessed and Most Pure Mother of our Lord and God and Savior, Jesus Christ, the Ever-Virgin Mary. Today, we celebrate her falling asleep. We celebrate her falling asleep and we remember from holy tradition how this event took place, how she used to come to the tomb of our Lord, the sepulchre in Jerusalem, and pray fervently every day. And one day the angel Gabriel came to her and announced that in three days she will leave this earth. She will fall asleep in death. And she returned to her place of residence and informed all of the disciples and all of those tending to her. You know, the Christian community in Jerusalem was a tight-knit community. There were many people throughout the city who despised the growing fervency of faith and prayerfulness of Christians and sought in any way, shape, or form to prevent the Christian community from growing and becoming strong. And so the faithful of Jerusalem was very nice, um, tightly knit. And miraculously, the apostles, who were sent all over throughout the world, mysteriously and joyfully appeared in Jerusalem to bid farewell to the Most Holy Theotokos. And her falling asleep was exactly just that. She fell asleep. Her death was without any pain, without any travail, without any sickness or sorrow, for she knew that she would see her Son, our Lord and God and Savior Jesus Christ, in more brilliant light, in, in such a greater manifestation. And so her departure was full of joy. And St. Thomas, the Apostle, who was delayed in coming to Jerusalem, made it to Jerusalem only on the third day. And the disciples, because of St. Thomas's sorrow for missing the event, opened up the tomb so that he may offer his last respects and prayers. And they opened the tomb and found that the body of the Most Holy Theotokos was no longer there. It was assumed up into heaven. Brothers and sisters, the Most Holy Mother of God gave birth to God, to Christ, the Redeemer of the world. In her womb dwelt the Word of God. And she was sinless. She had no personal sin. If we recall from holy tradition how she lived her childhood in the temple, learning a life of service and of sacrifice and of abstinence and of dedication. And she was given in betrothal to Joseph so that he would preserve her virginity in marriage. And she gave birth to the Son of God. And even seeing her own son on the cross, dying a death that he did not deserve, and seeing the hatred of all those around him, still did not sin. And the fruit of that was her peaceful departure from this life. <coughs> At every divine service, during one of the litanies, we, we say, a Christian ending to our life, Plain, the blameless, peaceful, and a good defense before the dread judgment seat of Christ. We all wish for a blameless, 
peaceful departure from this life, one that we would not be struck with sickness or sorrow. But we know that sickness and sorrow and death came into this world because of sin. But the Mother of God, the Mother of God in her sinlessness had no reason to suffer at her departure from this life. She departed from this life in such a manner because she, like all of us, was born with the original sin of Adam and therefore had to humble herself to the separation of soul and body that happens at every death. But our Lord, because she had no personal sin, because he himself dwelt in her womb, our Lord blessed her so that she would be once again reunited with her body and dwell in his heavenly kingdom. Today's feast, brothers and sisters, is, is a joyous feast because it is for us the fruit of the resurrection. In the center of this church, we also have the icon of the resurrection. Every Pascha, we celebrate the resurrection. Every Sunday, we celebrate the rising of our Lord from death. And the fruit of His resurrection is the forgiveness of our sins is the gift of the Holy Spirit that is given to all of us in holy baptism. And it is the inheritance of God's heavenly kingdom so that we may have eternal life. And the fruit, the fruit of such a resurrection we see in the Mother of God. And we pray, and we pray that we too may be granted worthy to depart from this life in a peaceful way so that we may not be troubled by sickness or sorrow misfortune so that we may not be faced with a, a death that is difficult and painful but that we may always have a strong faith and if we live a life of righteousness if we follow God's commandments if we strive with all our being to be in communion with God, as the Mother of God did, if we strive to serve Him and to follow His will, because the Mother of God followed God's will, He dwelt in her womb and brought to us salvation, because she said yes to the message of the Holy Archangel Gabriel when he announced to her that the, the Word of God will dwell in her dwell in her womb because she submitted to God's will submitted to God's will also when they when he commanded them to flee into Egypt submitted to God's will when that he commanded them to return to Nazareth submitted to God's will in humility and patience when she saw all of the people ridicule him and spit upon him and beat him and crucify him, submitted to God's will and even in the most painful moments of her life. But when she, we submit ourselves to God's will, we submit ourselves to his peace, to his comfort, to his spirit of righteousness. We submit ourselves to salvation. And so we run to the Mother of God, asking her to pray for us in God's heavenly kingdom, asking her to strengthen our faith so that no matter what confusion and difficulties may surround us, we may always be focused on Christ. Pray to the Mother of God so that we likewise may be granted peace and patience in all kinds of confusion and discord, so that we may have So that we may become a better dwelling place of God's Spirit and in so doing have peace in our life, draw closer to God, have peace with one another, love and patience.
so that we may be granted, when it is our time, a peaceful, painless, blameless life of um, death, departure from this life, and be granted rest in God's heavenly kingdom, where the Mother of God dwells eternally, where all the saints and the angelic world glorify our Lord and God, so that we may be counted worthy members of that heavenly kingdom. Amen.